everyone. Welcome to our video where we introduce IRAC, which is the structure or an organizational tool we use for legal writing. So in this video, I'm going to do an overview of what IRAC is, but I also want us to understand not just what it is, but why we use it and why it is so helpful. I don't know if some of you are like me, but let's say I read a lot and I need to know, I know that I need to sit down and do some writing, write a letter, write a legal analysis, whatever it is. Very often the thoughts are pretty clear in my head as to what I want to say. I might even be able to sit down and have a conversation with you or someone else and explain pretty clearly what it is I want to explain or say. But then when I sit down to write it, whether it be on paper or typed on my computer, I either draw a blank or I'm writing just sentence after sentence after sentence without a lot of coherent organization. So what IRAC does for us in the legal profession is it helps us make sense of what's pretty clear in our head and pretty clear from writing and from our reading and helps us organize it on paper. That's really all it is. It's an organizational structure. So when you sit down to write, you don't have to take a guess as to what should I say first? What should I say second? How should I conclude this point? If you can follow IRAC, there's a model and a structure for you. The other piece that's really helpful about IRAC is that it's also a building block of bigger levels of legal analysis. So in this PowerPoint, I'm going to give you the structure and overview of an IRAC paragraph. I'm also going to be using as a sample within this PowerPoint sentences from the sack and shop example that's in an appendix to your book. I'm not going to take that book out while I'm talking because you can have it next to you or open on a, a separate computer screen. But take a look at the sack and shop example that's in your book because that's a pretty good inter-office memo. And I'm going to be highlighting for you parts of the IRAC paragraphs in the discussion section there. But what by doing that, you'll be able to see how IRAC isn't just a tool for one single paragraph, but how it can be part of a bigger legal document with more layers of legal analysis. But we have to start with just understanding the basic structure of the IRAC paragraph. So that's what we're going to focus on here in this unit is understanding the structure of the IRAC paragraph. And then in your next PowerPoint, you're going to hear me explain the assignment and have a better understanding of how to tackle writing your own. Okay, the other piece that's written here that's pretty clear is again, understanding why IRAC is so important. It's the legal writing tool that allows us to take the precedent, the cases that we've read, remember that mandatory authority, and apply that precedent to our client's facts so we can make a prediction as to what we think the outcome will be for our client's case. And we will do that all in a paragraph, a written paragraph. So we'll take the existing precedent that we've researched, remember the mandatory authority, we will apply it to our client's set of facts. And from that, we will then be able to make a prediction as to how we think our client's case will come out. Again, we're not the judge and jury. We won't have a crystal ball, but we can get a pretty good idea of how the outcome of a case will come out based on that existing precedent and our client's facts. Okay, so what is IRAC? IRAC is a, an acronym. It stands for Issue, Rule, Analysis, Conclusion. That's all, it doesn't stand for the country. And so when we talk about an IRAC, we're talking about having a paragraph structure that looks like this. Your IRAC paragraph will always begin with an issue sentence. So note that I say sentence, not question. And I'm gonna go through in this PowerPoint explaining what each one of these is, again, with reference to the sack and shop example that's in your book. So the first sentence of your IRAC paragraph is an issue sentence. And the last sentence of your IRAC paragraph is the conclusion. In the middle, you're going to have the second, second sentence of your IRAC paragraph is a rule of law sentence. And we'll talk about in just a minute how the rule of law is a rule of law plus a citation and a discussion of that cited case. Then you will do an analysis and the analysis sentences are where you discuss your client's facts and then you will reach a conclusion. So let me say this all together. You will begin with a topic or issue sentence identifying your legal issue. You will then state a rule of law that comes from one of your cited cases, and you will also provide a citation 
to that case. That's your precedent. That's your guiding principle. After you set up the existing law, you will have another few sentences that we call analysis. And that's where you discuss your client's case, the facts of what's happening to your client. And then lastly, you will conclude. So let's look at some examples together. And again, I encourage you to look at the models in your book as well for more of them. The first sentence is the issue sentence. We can kind of think of this as like a topic sentence, but in the law. It's just a way to identify whatever issue is being discussed in that particular paragraph. A couple of keys to your issue sentences. Number one, there's only one. So again, look at the examples that are in your book. Look at the sack and shop example. Each one of those paragraphs in the discussion section begins with an issue sentence, something like the one here. The issue is whether sack and shop owed a duty of care to Harris. And that's it. The next sentence in that paragraph is already a rule sentence. So much like in other types of writing that you've done, there's only one topic sentence. Remember that this should also be a sentence. It should end in a period. When we do other types of legal writing, for example, when we put together the entire inter-office memorandum, there is a section called question presented where we pose an issue in the form of a question, but not here. This is a full paragraph with sentences. So again, we don't put a question mark at the end of the issue. We state it as an issue. The issue is whether Sack and Shop owed a duty of care to Harris. So that is the first sentence of your IRAC paragraph. The second sentence we call rule. And I said the second sentence we call rule, but the truth is rule should be more than one sentence. But let me explain to you what this looks like. The first sentence that follows your issue should be a rule that provides the holding, the big takeaway from your case precedent. In other words, what did you learn from your case precedent? If the issue that you're asking yourself is the issue identified here, whether Sack and Shop, which is a grocery store, owes a duty of care to Harris, who's a patron, what kind of cases do you think you'd been researching? Well, you were likely researching cases where there were grocery stores and whether their grocery stores owed a duty of care to Harris. So your precedent is going to give you that guiding principle, that rule. I like to call it as like a takeaway. Like, what did I learn from my precedent? The example provided in the sack and shop case looks like this. A grocery store owes a duty of care to any patron. Well, that sounds pretty good. And then, of course, we'll talk about a citation. But that's the takeaway. If we had been in Illinois and been doing this research and we were like, oh, I need to find some cases about whether a store or a grocery store owes a duty of care to its patrons. And in my research of mandatory authority, I found this 1990 case that says grocery stores owe duty of care to patron. I'd be excited. I'd be like, yeah, that's exactly the kind of case I'm looking for. And what did I learn from that case? Well, I learned that a grocery store owes a duty of care to its patron. So the second sentence of my IRAC right after this one, which is the issue is whether sack and shop owed a duty of care, should be a sentence like this. The takeaway rule from my cited case, a grocery store owes a duty of care to any patron, followed immediately by the citation to that case. We will come back throughout these semesters and talk about citation. But it's really important when you provide the rule of law to link it immediately to the citation. Notice that the structure of writing doesn't begin with in Ward versus Kmart, the court held. Something I'm going to mention now that I'll continue to mention throughout semesters of legal writing one and two is that in legal writing, we very often put the citation after our sentence. So instead of the, the inclination to want to say in Ward versus Kmart, we learn that a grocery store owes a duty of care to any patron. We state the rule of law as its own standalone sentence followed by the citation. And that way the reader can just really take in that citation, take in that rule of law. And of course the citation is there should the reader decide that they wanna go ahead and read that full case for themselves. Okay, so, so far we've covered issue and rule of law, but wait, not done with rule of law. 
What I would like to see is for you as we as you advance in your legal writing, especially in a legal writing two class, but beginning in legal writing one, is understanding how to expand this rule. Because if all you gave me as the reader was just this citation and this case, I might want to learn more, especially if the issue is a little bit more complicated. So one more sophisticated way, and I know this is long to read, so what I would recommend doing is pausing, reading what's here, and then come back to my video because I know you cannot read the content here and listen to me at the same time. But immediately following that citation, it's really helpful to then have just one or two sentences where you explain how that rule of law was applied in that cited case. And remember, you're not actually talking about your client yet. This is still in that rule section. So it's still in the part of your IRAC paragraph where you're only discussing the research that you found. But notice how helpful it would be to provide more context to not just say this is what a patron is or this is what a breach is and give a definition from a case, but also how is that decided in that precedent? Why is that precedent so helpful? So here I chose a different part of the same sack and shop example just because this was the more involved IRAC. So imagine that your issue sentence, and that should be capital of course, says the issue is whether sack and shop breached its duty of care to Harris. And here's a rule sentence. A store owner will be found to have breached its duty of care to a patron if the business created the hazard. Okay, so what if you stopped there and just gave the citation to Paps v. Hillman? I would be fine. It would still be an IRAC paragraph. But as the reader, I want to know, what do you mean by created a hazard? So notice how this author went immediately into just a couple of short sentences. And I shortened this from the book just to make it um, fit in a PowerPoint presentation, but feel free to read the whole Iraq paragraph in your book. In fact, you should. But in Pabst, the grocery store had overfilled a display of green beans and they spilled onto the floor. A patron slipped on the beans and the court inferred that the grocer created the hazardous condition. Ignore my typos of not having a period here. These should be complete sentences. Sorry about that. But more importantly, I just want you to see the structure. This whole part here, that is all the rule. So issue sentence is one sentence. The rule sentence begins with a single sentence and a citation. The single sentence is the takeaway principle from that case. What did you learn from your cited case? And the full citation to the cited case. But followed by anywhere between one, two, three sentences, not that many, where you as the writer explain what was the major application of that rule in the cited case. So in the cited case here, we involved a green bean display that overflowed. This was a hazardous, excuse me, a hazardous situation created by an employee, and therefore there was a breach of the duty of care to Harris. So that's part of your IRAC paragraph. What we have so far is the issue and the rule. In video number two, I'm going to then go into the analysis and the conclusion so you can see how the full paragraph comes together.